Uh, John chapter 6, I think we'll start reading in verse uh, number 31. And if you know anything, and I'm sure you do, that this whole chapter is dedicated to bread. And I, I think about this, really, I do. The more older I get, I think about how great God is that He would just condescend down to our thought pattern. Because if God talked to us in God language, you'd be sitting there going, I don't have a clue what He's talking about because He is so high uh, uh, in intelligent level. He's, you think and read about Albert Einstein, he don't know nothing compared to what God knows. And so he condescends in his intelligence so people like me can understand. And, and, and have you ever thought about Brother Josh when he said, consider the lilies? Ain't that amazing? That he, this great God that we serve would condescend down to where he would say, you need to think about flowers. That's amazing because most men don't even think about them. But evidently the great God of heaven says you need to sit and study and ponder and meditate on these flowers. But now he's talking to us about bread. Something that no matter where you go, if you go any part, a region of the United States of America, they know what bread is. You could go to Europe, they know what bread is. You could go uh, to China, they know what, they've got their own take on bread. But God is going to show us the greatest bread there is. And, and Jesus is going to tell us what this bread is. And look, it says uh, in verse 32, Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he that cometh down from heaven, and giveth life unto the world. Then said they unto him, Lord, evermore give us this bread. And Jesus said unto them, I am. I am the bread of life. Listen at this. He that cometh to me shall never hunger. Ain't that amazing? Huh? <clears throat> Listen. And he that believeth on me shall never thirst. But I said unto you that ye, sh uh, that ye also have seen me and believe not. I want to preach on the bread of life. Now, if you study the Bible, one good thing you need to learn is always go to the first place the word is, that you're studying is used. Now, I'll read it to you. It's found in Genesis 3. Verse 19. Now listen what God says to Adam and Eve. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. You know what God says? All this bread that you're going to take into your body, you're going to have to work for it. But you know what Jesus said? If you believe on me, I'll give you the greatest bread you could ever eat. Now, let me say this about bread. You can have, a, I don't know, maybe you, we don't have a lot of cooks anymore, but it's, let's just pretend that we do. That uh, you bake a loaf of bread, and when you get the last piece, it's gone. And you'll get hungry again. He's not, you know, the, in January of 1977, as an 18-year-old boy, I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. Do you know something, Brother Jordan, that's never happened to me? I've never looked for another Savior since that day. That's what he's talking about. He's talking about once you get saved, you will, he ain't saying that you won't get hungry physically. He's saying you found peace. You found satisfaction. You found contentment in your mind. I never have looked for another Savior since the day I got born again. Uh, that bread that sustains us throughout life. Now, I want to just, if you'll just uh, go along with me for a minute. I got to thinking, when I was five years old, my mother died. She was 27 years old. And from that point till I was 18, I was sent to live with my grandmother, the greatest lady I've ever known. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is she was old time. Now, I would remember between 5.30 and 6 o'clock every morning, 
Granny would get up and go to the kitchen. She had this big wooden bowl that was carved out of a tree. She'd set that on the table. She'd put flour, lard, lard. Don't pass out, lard. Uh, good for you. Uh, somebody said, lard will kill you. I said, it killed my grandmother at 97. Mm. She put that milk in there. And I could see her hands with arthritis making up a big ball of dough. And this is what I want to talk to you about before I get into the message. Is in bread, there's always hands associated with it being made. Now, let me say this. I want to try to preach fast. <laughs> Number one, you'll see the sovereign's hand is in the bread of life. Why? Because he had his handprints all over the life of Jesus. God did. Do you know what God said? He said before the uh, foundation of the world, Jesus was a lamb slain. Do you know what? Before there was ever Adam, before there was ever Eve, there was a Savior. There was a Savior. Why? Because God did not predestinate that. He foreknew that. There's a difference between it. God don't predestinate people to go to hell. He don't predestinate people to go to heaven. He foreknows who's going where. He's not a, a, a God that's an ignoramus. He knows all there is. He knows what's going to happen in your life today. If you're here and lost today, He knows if you're going to reject Him today. He knows if you'll bow your knee and get saved today. He knows that. We see that He's the guiding hand. Then I noticed throughout the Gospels, there was the hands of society that was on his life. Huh? Society. Everybody that was around, there was negative and there was positive hands that touched his life. Huh? I remember one hand. There was a lady. She had had an issue of blood for th uh, 38 years. And you know what she said? She said, if I can but touch the hem of his garment. Do you know that Jesus was so much God that his clothes had God on them? Huh? She did not touch Jesus. She touched his clothes. Something that was touching him. Uh, uh, those are hands through the Bible that are gathering. You know, a lot of people follow Jesus and they, uh, they call out on Jesus when, everybody gets, when granny gets sick. Uh, I, I'm not against it. Yeah, I'm not against that. that you, we need him. But I'd rather be another group there's gathering hands listen at this but there was the hands of the sinners that was a hold of him and they said crucify him crucify him crucify that's the hands of the guilty but praise God there's another group of hands that had their hands on him on the bread of life that was the saved you know what they said after, the, after he got uh, resurrected they bowed their knee you know what they, they are hands of glorifying hands those that said glory to God praise God the one who died on the cross of Calvary and gave me life what hands uh, <clears throat> second thing before we get into the message you know bread that's never been tasted is useless uh, that talks about the lips uh, you know oh taste the Lord and see that he is what good you know you can't get born again and not know that he's good uh, you could be far away from God. But you know what you know? In reality, God is far better, greater to me than I am to Him. He does more for me, Ray Roberts, than I do for Him. I'm not deserving to get to come to church. I don't deserve to own a King James Bible. But Brother Josh, I own about 40 of them. Amen. That's hands. That's the lips you know what I've tasted oh taste the Lord and see that he's gracious that's not grace that's gracious that means it's a continual act every day if you get up in the morning it'll be the grace of God if you go to work tomorrow hey from home amen make it down the stairs he's, he's suffering Donald's suffering I don't know how he makes it uh, uh, that'll be the grace of God huh? I'm a truck driver I'm not saying that proudly you know what happens? People don't pay attention in school. They give them a CDL and send them out over the road. Uh, amen. That's the truth. Uh, I've traveled more miles than I care to mention. 
but not one mile have I made it without his grace huh I've made it with his grace uh, I remember one time I was in Dayton Ohio it started to sleet now this is the truth I went to get on the interstate and you know how they'll uh, bank the road five mile an hour I'm in a semi trailer 43 foot trailer on, and I was up here at the top and all the way down he was just now I learned how to pray that night huh. Huh. grace you know what another thing is his mercy grace is God giving you something you don't deserve mercy is God holding from you what do you do deserve huh you can't separate the two you can't separate grace and mercy huh you know what God does he's handing out mercy you know what God's doing to America right now he's giving them mercy huh this is the craziest bunch of people I've ever been around in my life huh you can't think like them without being demon possessed I'm going to say that again, but I'll duck before I do. You cannot think like our politicians think without being demon-possessed. Huh? That's my opinion. Look, he's rich in mercy. You know, he's, he's, he's rich in life. Huh? You know what salvation, he describes salvation as? abundant life see sinners got life they don't have abundant life mm. we got abundant life that means this life just it's bubbling over as a matter of fact that's what he told that lady he said this thing will be a, it's just like an artesian well it just bubbles up and when it gets done he bubbles you right over into heaven huh mercy taste the Lord there's a, so much more the long suffering of God think about it how God puts up with us even since we've been saved. You ever, ever God ever told you to do something? Uh, Brother Jordan was talking about it today. And you said, not today. I've done that multitudes of times. Hmm. I'm saying, Lord, I'm tired. You know, God, don't you think God knows you're tired? Huh? He knows the very hairs on your head, and with me and Ray, that ain't hard for him to count. Uh, it, gets, it gets pretty easy in our case but nonetheless so we looked at his hands we looked at the taste we looked at the lips now let's look at the message now look this whole chapter is dedicated to bread now uh, look in verse 7 Philip answered him 200 penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. I want to look first of all about the comparison. How can you compare the bread of life to barley? You can't. Uh, that would be like comparing a Volkswagen bug to a Mercedes Benz. You can't compare them. Any of y'all remember the Ford Pinto? You ever get to ride in one of those? From the factory, from the factory, they rolled like a stagecoach. Compare that to a uh, Lincoln Continental. Now, let me say this about, he says it, uh, the disciple, he says, hey, uh, this just wouldn't be enough. I want to come to you to tell you, no matter what you're seeking after, it'll never satisfy you. Any of this stuff that's associated with bread, the physical need, it'll never, ever satisfy you. The brother hit on it this morning, talking about all this stuff. And we're living in a day of stuff. The more stuff you have, the, the, the better off you are. No, the more stuff you have, the more responsible responsibility you have to keep that stuff. And the more work you have to do to keep that stuff. But see, this bread of life, it is so sufficient, it'll keep you. The bread of life will sustain you. He'll come in the night when tears are there and He'll comfort you. But this other bread, you'll have to do something to get it. 
You'll have to labor for it. I like presents myself. I'd rather, if, if I can get something for free, let's do it. That's society, right? Uh, they're standing there with uh, open hands. Huh? That's the way it is. But life, this life is not free. But abundant life is. Uh, now, let me see if I can find this verse. I want to read this to you. Verse 28. Then saith they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Everybody wants to do something. Jesus blows them off the saddle. Jesus answered and said, This is the work of God, that ye what? Believe on Him. Huh? No works involved. No glory for you. Donald, you don't get no glory. You get to go to heaven on the shirt tail of Jesus. Yeah, man, I say praise His name today. That God would allow me to get there in the first place, but I don't have to do anything. Huh? Your houses, housing market is so outrageous. There ain't nothing to pay two or $300,000 for a two-bedroom shack. Huh? Listen at this. We're going to get to walk on a street of gold. Not streets of gold, a street of gold. Uh, walls of jasper, gates of pearl. We get to go there and see Paul and all of those people. I, I want to see them. Uh, but most of all, I get to see him. Can you imagine how John felt when he was on the Isle of Patmos? And he said, I was, on the, he said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. And he said, I heard a voice. This voice he had heard before, but not like he had heard him this time. He wasn't in this physical body. He was in a glorified body. Can you imagine one day when you, either by death or by the, uh, the Savior coming to get us, we descend up into the clouds, and there he is, the Son of God, who died for our sin, who arose again, that we could have life. That's the bread of life. Nobody to compare to him. Huh? Secondly, the cost of bread. Now, in verse 9, it costs this little lad his lunch. Hmm? And it'll cost you if you eat of it unless you steal it. I don't recommend that you do, but especially if you're a Christian. <laughs> but this stuff down here costs you. Huh? But you know what it costs you to get to heaven? Nothing. It cost Jesus his life. For him to become the bread of life, he had to die. And on that third day, get up again. Ain't that something? I want to tell you something. Salvation is free, but it ain't cheap. It's not cheap. It might not cost you nothing. It might not cost you nothing, Brother Ray, but it cost our Savior a whole lot. Uh, it cost him. It cost him sweat, sweat what became blood. It cost him crown of thorns. It caused him to be mocked. Can you imagine the Son of God that who knew no sin? They stripped him of all his clothing. And before the known world at that time, you know what? People gazed upon him. And I can imagine, Brother Ray, the shame that he bore on the cross of Calvary. So you and I could be here today. So you and I could sit here and listen to someone try to preach the Word of God to you. What a wonderful thing that God was willing to pay the price so you could sit in this church today. Might I say to you, try to find one like it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Now I'm not going to stand up here and say it's perfect because I'm here. Second, you're here. But I will say this. Three things about churches. Finding a man of God that'll preach. Difficult. Then finding a church that believes the King James Bible. Thirdly, finding a church that will let you worship, whether they do it or not. And you've got all three of them here. What a wonderful thing. The cost. Just the cost. Cost alone. Amen. I usually don't have this many pieces of paper, but I'm as nervous as a church mouse in a room full of cat, cats. So I might have to go get some more stuff. But then I thought about the conditions of this bread. Now, listen to me. 
me see if I got this wrote down right. Look, look in verse 49. It says, Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness. And what happened to them? They're dead. Huh? Now look in verse 51. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Now, what are the conditions? That he was telling them, your fathers got to eat manna. You didn't get to. It's almost like the kid at the school going, nanny, nanny, nanny. Uh, you didn't get to eat no manna. Do you know, you go home today and eat bread, it ain't going to help me none. Because that bread's for an individual. But this bread of Jesus, the bread of life, is for everybody. The world might die and go to hell, Brother Josh, but it won't be because God didn't make a way for them to have it. Uh, we're standing here with our arms out. You even got it on all this other networks of whatever you're doing. I don't know. But I do know this. The message of Jesus is still getting out. God will always have somebody to stand up and tell the truth. Uh, devil ain't going to snuff out everybody's candle. Devil ain't going to shut down the, every church. Uh, there's going to be a light shining somewhere. Uh, but this is just the way God said it would be. Uh, don't, don't, don't lose uh, faith. Don't get all shook up about the way things are going. It's Everything's going just on plan. Just because the, the boat's getting rocked don't mean the rock ain't coming. Uh, hey man, he's coming. See, all of this stuff that's going on is just proof that he's more sooner to come. Hmm? I wouldn't get my roots down too deep. We got a lot of young, young people here coming, make plans for the future, but don't put that in concrete because the Lord's coming. This condition, condition. Do you know there's not hardly anything you do that don't have bread associated with it? You know you can't have a sandwich. You can't go to McDonald's and have a sandwich without, without having bread. Because if you don't have no bread, it's not a sandwich. I mean, that's, boy, that's rocket science is preaching right there. Uh, you have to, yeah, yeah, yeah. You take the bread off. You know, I was telling you about my granny. Now, don't get offended in that word granny because she, she took honor in that. She made biscuits for, more, for, the bread, for the breakfast, but then at 11 o'clock, she made cornbread. Yeah, seven days a week. Then at supper at 5.30, she had biscuits and cornbread. Uh, and my granny never whopped off no biscuits. You know what a whop biscuit is? That's them come in a little tube, and you unwind that, and you whop them on the end of the table. Uh, and then you put them in a pan. She never done that. See, you trying to you, listen to me? The conditions. You know what? I couldn't eat no manna. I don't know. What, I don't even know what the. You know, they didn't even know what the ingredients were. They they described it. The Bible did, and they give Moses all the accountability for it that he did it, and Moses didn't do nothing. <clears throat> he even told him. He said, Moses didn't feed you. My father did. So many times God does stuff for us and we give credit to the doctor, we give credit to so-and-so, we give to, to our boss at work or somebody else. But I want to tell you, when the bottom line, when the rubber meets the road, everything that happens to you, it's the good God of heaven that's being mighty, mighty gracious. He's the one. It ain't you. What do you deserve? I'm, just, I'm not trying to be mean, I'm just being honest. What do we deserve? Even right now, as being saved and in this church, we deserve to go to hell. Amen. Fourthly, this bread, both of them, to do you any good, must be consumed. <clears throat> See, that's where people miss it, Brother Ray, is they think what they need is church. Church is good if it's the right kind of church, but that ain't going to help you. There's a lot of church people. I think there's a lot of church people going to hell. Why? Because they think they're good. Why? Because I go to church. Do you know heaven is not for good people? Did you know that? Heaven is not for good people. Heaven's for God's people. <laughs> uh, 
You know who has a key to my front door? Just my family members. Huh? <laughs> Think about it. Huh? The neighbor don't have no key to my door. Huh? Same way with God. You know, you got this old uh, saying that we're all God's children. No, we're not. We're all God's creation. Hmm. Huh? Did you know your dog? That's God's creation. That's right. Listen, what we're missing today is sitting down with this book. Do you know that you cannot separate this book from the living, breathing Lord Jesus? You cannot. This book, you know what the Bible says? You do err, not knowing what? The Scriptures. You know why people are living beneath their privileges? Because they're not consuming this book. The more you get in this book, the more that you have in this book, the less effect that world will have on us. More people are, there's more people today, and this is my opinion, and I'm not no doctor, but uh, I'll do until he gets here. More people are being attacked in their mind because that's the way Satan works. And the reason he attacks your mind is because you aren't reading this. Jesus had three occasions that he was attacked by Satan. And what did he say? It is written. He took them to the Old Testament and said, Hey, Satan, I'm not going to serve you. It's written. I should serve the Lord. See, it's got to be inside of you. We're, we're living in, pe in a day where people, the devil's got us so busy trying to gather up all this stuff, have all this stuff to outdo the neighbors, and they don't even like you anyway. Huh? Y'all looking at me like you, you got more friends than honestly I'm just going to be honest your church family is probably about all you got I'm just being honest I'm not trying to be ugly I'm not trying to be mean I'm just trying to be honest uh, if you think those people at work I don't have no friends at work I have people I know uh, people I talk to people I associate with at work huh I've had people, Brother Josh, come up to me and say, Hey, Ron, go with us over to Al's. Al's was a bar. He said, You don't have to drink. I said, I ain't going over there. I ain't got the thing over there. Right. They said, Well, you don't know. See, all that means is that the devil can get a hold in your life. And they said, Well, hey, Ron says he's a Christian. He even says he's a preacher. And he went over there and sat down and drank Coke with them guys at the bar. I ain't going over there. Huh? You know why? It's not because I'm so spiritual, but I know what this book says about it. You know? Forsake all that stuff. Huh? We got cussing Christians now. Huh? Right, I'm telling the truth. Huh? You know why? If they knew that, did you ever see any cuss words in there? I've read it front to back, up, down, sideways, all over there is. I've... Huh? Ain't no cussing in there. Y'all getting quiet. Still true. Huh? You got to get it inside of you. You got to get this. See, really, literally, what he was saying is that he needed to be inside of you. But that brings me to the next point is that there's the controversy of this bread. Now, what do you mean, controversy? Well, look in verse uh, uh, 53. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whosoever eateth my flesh, drinketh my blood, hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last days. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. You know what they said? We ain't going to follow this guy no more. Just keep reading. That sounds like cannibalism. That's what it sounds like, don't it? But that, don't, that ain't what he meant. That ain't what he meant. He was going to tell them that there's coming a day that the Holy Spirit's going to come 
And when he comes, he's going to get inside of you. And he's going to, that's why you don't have to, I don't have to have no preacher tell me I don't need to be out drinking. Huh? I don't need that. I got the Holy Ghost. I'm trying to think, which is hard for me. I mean, it's been over 20 years ago where I used to work. They give us gift certificates, and one of them was for Applebee's. Now, if you eat there, that's your business. Don't get mad at me. I was sitting there at Applebee's, and the Holy Ghost, he sat down next to me. And he said, Ron, what are you doing here? I said, well, what do you mean? Look around. And if you've ever been there, you look around, and it's a bar. It's just a bar. A sports bar. See, I don't care what you call it. You can call it a bar. You can call it a saloon. Joe's Bar and Grill. It's a bar. He said, you get out of here and don't come back. And I, it's been over 20 years ago, and I ain't been back. Why? Because he told me. Now, if you go there, that's on you, don't you? You don't have to have my convictions. See, why was that? Because the Holy Spirit is inside of me telling me. He's guiding me. There's a controversy because they said, this, this just don't sound right. Uh, eating, you know, because if you go back under the, uh, under the law, the law said you're not even supposed to eat it, nothing with blood in it. And he's saying, eat my flesh, drink my blood. And they're saying, ain't no way. But I want to say here today that if you're saved the day, the second, the very split second, immediately, Brother Phil, immediately, that, that you got saved, the Holy Spirit came inside of you. He lives inside of you. He leads you. He guides you. He talks to you. And when you read that word, he tells you what it is. Uh, now, let me read you a verse. Matthew 4. Four. They asked, Satan was talking to Jesus. Jesus says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now, listen to me. Not only do you see the controversy, but you see the condiments of this bread. You know what? That's stuff that goes... If you look that word up, it actually talks about ketchup and mustard. I looked it up. So if you go to McDonald's, that's what they're condiment boy. That's something that goes along with what you're eating. Now, what do you need with this bread? Well, I tell you something that goes good with bread. Milk. I like milk. My wife, she don't like it. First Peter says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. You know what we're looking for? We're looking for lightning to strike. We're looking for hallelujah. But Jesus said, you know what? As babes desire the sin, seal, miracle of the Word. You don't see, you don't bring a baby home. They got one right back there. That baby ain't back there having a pork chop. It'll be a long time for that little girl eats a pork chop. But I'd say she'd enjoy a big bottle of milk. And you know what you need to do? You need to have this bread with a glass of milk. Why? Because it goes along with it. Take this Bible and drink you down some milk with it. Because bread goes down, especially, I don't know what y'all eat. Uh, I'm from eastern Kentucky. We, we don't eat much like we eat up here. You know. But cornbread, it, 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 you need a little milk with it sometimes to get it down. Huh? Amen. Hey, praise God. Huh? Listen at this. We're getting close to the end. Uh, but you need water. Ephesians 5 says that you might sanctify and cleanse you with the washing and the wor water of the Word. You know what God does? He takes the Bible. and he, he cleaned me up some this morning. I got to reading it and I said, I got to stop this, man. He's on my trail. Uh, <clears throat> he got to pointing out things about me that I, at that point I didn't know, but I know now. You know what he does? He said, let me take you over to this brazen laver and wash your hands, wash your feet. That's what this Bible does. That's why we don't like to read it, because it'll clean us up. You know what we're doing today in the church? We're pointing out everybody else's sin. We're trying to straighten up everybody else. What about you? What about you? What about me? What about my, my faults? What about my sin? Huh? That's what we need. We need to get ourselves washed up. Listen to this. 1 Corinthians 3, 2 says, you, you, you need, He said, I have fed you with milk and not with meat. 
You know what Paul was saying? He said, I couldn't feed you no meat because you couldn't eat it. You're like the little baby there. You couldn't swallow it. Huh? See, a lot of people like to point at Josh. Say, you know what? If he'd get his life act together, we'd, get, we'd move on. But they never point back to themselves. That's meat. We want to point our fingers at everybody else. The world's in the condition because of the politicians. No, the world's in the condition because of the church's condition. Uh, that's, a, that's the truth uh, do you know that most people when their kids get up to the age to where they can leave church they leave church <clears throat> that's sad uh, I don't know the answer why that is but I do know this that's a, that's a, that should never be we should offer these kids something that they could not ever find out there uh, you know, I found out that they like to make kids be old fogies. Huh? They're kids. They're kids. Don't let them have no fun. Let them come home and read the Bible for eight hours. <laughs> that's, I, that's crazy. Kids are kids. What I'm trying to tell you is we need to learn to take meat into our own lives and get this whatever it is into our own lives and consume something that will make us you know uh, I like donuts do you like donuts? I love donuts but you know the thing about donuts they won't, you won't get much gas out of them uh, you got to have something with meat in it to give you some gas for the day these people eating Cheerios I, I told somebody the other day and he looked at me like I was crazy my grandmother we weren't allowed to have pizza for supper she said that's not real food you've got to get something else that's got, that'll keep you going she said you can get you a pizza after that y'all looking at me like he did because you think that's food, real food <laughs> uh, Lord help us Jesus I'm just saying cinnamon rolls they're nice but you'll run out of fuel Chinese food if you want to be hungry before you get home eat you a big dose of that <laughs> uh, uh, take you a ham sandwich fellas if you go with your wife which my wife hates Chinese so we don't gotta go uh Take your ham sandwich and put it in a bag when you go because you'll need that on the way home when you eat Chinese food. Mm. Ain't, no, ain't no meat. <laughs> Listen to this and I'm closing. Man, I need to close. There's the comfort of the bread. Verse 58. This is the bread that which came down from heaven. Look at, look at what it says. He that eateth this bread shall, ne shall live forever. Ain't that comforting to know? All the stuff that I told you about this other bread, you're going to get hungry again. But this bread here, it's very comforting to me to know no matter how bad it gets, no matter what, what I face, no matter, they can only bother me till I get to the graveyard. Once I make it there, I'm home free. It's comforting. Brother Josh, you come. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, head on over to your app store and download the IBC Florence app today, where we have our music, sermons, videos, devotions, and much more. And as always, Thanks for listening.